The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, traders, hello and welcome to this live intraday strategy session on SB Trade Desk. Today's Tuesday, May 5th. Michael Boutros here with you guys. Good to be here. Eileen, Adrius, Chintan, looks like we got a good crowd here today. So, lots to talk about. Huge event risk week. Uh, this will be the only scalp webinar that we do this week, guys. I'll be traveling for the remainder of the week. I will try to give an update on Thursday. Um, but obviously you have a major, major event risk on tap on Friday with the NFP print. Uh, as it pertains to some of the commodity pairs we've been following on the intraday page, we do have on tap tonight Aussie data with regards to the employment uh, report after the RBA, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, and we also have Kiwi data. So Kiwi employment comes out tonight as well. So a lot of those setups are going to be in play, obviously, for the euro dollar. You know, the highlight will be Friday's print. We did just get the release of the U.S. trade balance coming in a little bit deeper than expected. Deficit of $51.4 billion. We we're looking for a deficit of $41.7. You're seeing some dollar softness here sort of continue to gather pace, specifically versus the Aussie, which was the biggest gainer in overnight trade. Obviously, uh, the RBA cutting interest rates. Market expectations had all but factored that in. We talked about that at length in yesterday's webinar, uh, charging a drop right into the opening range low for the week. Broadly held, again, spreads did blow out on this, I understand. Very hard to trade, not really much in it for us, but certainly giving us some clarity here on the broader direction for the Aussie. We'll go over that trade, we'll go over the Kiwi trade. I wanna take as many questions of yours as possible. So as always, feel free to throw out any questions or trade setups that you guys are following as well. Eileen, remind me to take a look at Sterling Yen, yeah. It's um, all the sterling crosses are starting to come back in focus. And I think as you get deeper into the month, they're only going to get clearer. So uh, let's jump right in. I tried to <laughs> to relay yesterday how, um, you know, not enthused I was about the current conditions for scalping. And guys, part of the strategy and part of near term trading in general is knowing when you want to stay out of the market and knowing when the conditions are not ideal for our type of trading. Um, obviously, when you start off the week with an opening range like this, I mean, you can try to squeeze stuff out. Um, but you have to be super nimble and, and you know, the signals are just not going to be there. Uh, and spe specifically when we're starting the month, when we're starting the week, uh, and we're coming into a major key level of support, which is what this was, essentially the 78 handle for the Aussie. Here's the daily chart again. Um, you kind of just want to be a little bit more reserved. Uh, now, obviously, as we noted in the report, we were looking to buy a low. Um, so, you know, we'll be looking to buy a low if they do cut. Obviously, it's been very hard to get in on that position because of just how quickly that happened. But, um, you know, the broader directional bias here is working in our favor. So at least we're getting some clarity. You have an outside day at the low, off of support, taking you back above the median line and uh, near term resistance right around where we are right now. We're testing it right around the 79 handle. All right. So um, sort of the initial area of support that we were looking for gives clarity to the weekly opening range, which is just setting up. OK. Top side break beyond here, you're looking for the 80 handle. Again, that key resistance that caught the highs uh, back last week. Also, that 2013 median line that has continued to serve us uh, for the Oz. So what are we looking for heading into the U.S. session? Again, there's still major event risk on tap for the Aussie. You have the employment data tonight, and then tomorrow you have ADP from the United States. And then heading into Friday, obviously, um, non-farm payrolls. So there's still a lot of possibilities for this to play out. Our broader focus remains way to the upside above 7,800. So um, let's look at this in the five-minute chart. Let's see real quick if we have any sort of near-term triggers. Oop. And again, looks like we may have just missed one. Gosh darn it. Yeah, okay. So this would have been a good trigger against the lows here. Obviously, the data is helping. Uh, the softer print on the trade balance, I wouldn't really follow that too aggressively today. Looking at the dollar index, guys, you can see that it's a split for the greenback in general. Okay, the euro, the yen, the kiwi, all weaker on the session. A little bit of strength here in the CAD and the sterling. But here's what the dollar index looks like. It's important to keep this in mind as well. So we were working under the assumptive uh, move yesterday that the 11,880 threshold was going to hold. We closed literally like one pip above it. Um, the close yesterday was 11,884, a couple of pips above it. But here we are pulling back. Again, a major inflection range for the index. 
January highs, February highs, March swing lows. And now it's going to turn out, if we push lower today, to be the opening range uh, high. Also, one note, today's high is 11,899, which means that if we break the lows here, you're making an outside reversal candle at resistance. Way too early. We're just starting the session, obviously, but we're pretty darn close to those lows. That's something I'll be looking at for the dollar index as well. And on a downside move, guys, if we get back below that 100-day moving average, that gives all the more credence to trying to play the Aussie longs um, on the back of that release. Okay. So getting some clarity here. By the way, top side break, your key levels at this point. This is going to be sort of your breakout zone right here heading into the U.S. session. Top side break, you're looking for the 80 handle. You're looking for 80.22, which is, again, on that daily chart, the longer dated 100% extension. Right over here. And that's off the highs. And then that trend line, medium line resistance comes in right in that region as well. So we'll be cautious here, but broadly remaining constructive while within this uh, while within this formation. And you know, if we zoom out of this, it's actually been pretty clean, guys, except for the overshot that we got last week. Um, nice hold. You know, 78 handle was critical. Uh, I know on the swing side of things, that dip uh, did take out the long side of the trade. That being said, it's what happens in trading, guys. That's why we have the opportunity right now to still uh, take advantage of the rally if we do sit some setbacks to get some long triggers going here. Keep in mind you have a, a pending uh, support trigger here in momentum as well. If that gives out, we'll let this thing reset and we'll look to reestablish the longs as long as we can get some triggers down here. But the broader focus here is for a move back towards that 79.37 level. Yeah, Raj, I know. Uh, trust me. <laughs> me and Jamie are always on the same page. He says we got stopped out on the Aussie dollar. Uh, looks like there was a typo on the stops on the swing trade. I mean, it looks like, yeah, from one report to another, it shifted 10 pips, um, which might have taken you out on the, on the lows there. But the spreads did blow out pretty quick. So here's the thing, guys. When you come into an event like this, and we talked about this in the webinar. Again, I don't want to bore you guys, but it's important to note that when markets are pricing in so heavily. So we, if we looked at the Credit Suisse overnight swaps, it looked like market participants had factored in a 78% chance for a cut, right? So then it puts the the emphasis, if you will, on the forward guidance. Okay, so they did cut. The risk was if they didn't, you'd see the Aussie rip, right? It didn't. They did cut interest rates. But the focus that we took away from yesterday's release were the commentary uh, from Steven. So if we take a quick look at some of the things that he noted, I don't want to uh, go too much into the fundies, guys, but you know these kinds of, these kinds of tidbits add clarity to why price action did what it did. A, Further appreciation, further Aussie depreciation seems likely necessary. That's fluff. We hear that all the time. The biggest thing was that the markets took away that this was not the start of the beginning of a series of rate cuts, meaning it was sort of a one and done type deal. They seem upbeat about the economy. They're saying they're seeing stronger growth in employment over the past six months. We'll get the employment gauge tonight. So we'll see if that uh, actually materializes. Uh, the economy is operating with spare capacity for some time now. That's something we've heard before. Uh, information suggests stronger employment growth, uh, and yada, yada, yada. Long story short, rate cut to reinforce encouraging trend for demand, which means that they're not really seeing this as sort of a series of, of easing measures you're going to have to implement. That being said, that was the takeaway, and that's why the Aussie, having priced in the, 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 the interest rate cut already, saw this rally. Okay, So it just goes to show you – goes hand in hand with what we were looking at for the, for the for the technicals for finding some support right into this region. All right, any questions on the Aussie before we move on? Can't remember your Tokyo, Sydney opening range highs just higher here at 7910. And again, there's room. I'm going to wait this one out. To be quite frank with you guys, I haven't taken any positions at all this week. Okay, uh, it just hasn't the cl the clarity hasn't been there, the signals haven't been there, and with everyone kind of on tap waiting for this uh, um, event risk this week, it just hasn't been anything in it for me. So uh, we'll keep our eyes out. We do have some triggers that'll invalidate some of our long biases, but uh, as of now, looking higher in the Oz. 
Regarding the RSI 2 indicator, says Terry, on some of your charts you have 14 periods, some of you have 20. What's the difference? Thanks, Mike. Uh, we've talked about this here before, Terry. You know what? I mean, I don't want to get too much into it, but honestly, just go back and look and see what is giving you the clearer triggers. Sometimes when uh, volatility is really extreme on the short end, um, I'll zoom it into a 14 period because remember, the smaller the periods you get, the, the easier the oscillator will move. Okay, the more volatility, the more descriptive uh, moves you'll see in this. Uh, if you push it out to a 20, it starts to flatten out a little bit, but a lot of times on some of the commodity pairs and some of the pairs that are a little bit uh, lesser or more volatile, rather, um, you'll get a little bit more of a, of a, of a smoother line. So 14 for the, the pairs that have a little bit tighter of an ATR, you're not getting all that much volatility. 20 for the pairs that are getting a little bit bigger. It's not something I work with statically, Terrence. A lot of times I'll just go back in price action and see what's giving me the best 40, 60 holds. So meaning in the uptrend, I want to see multiple holds at 40. And in the downtrend, I want to see multiple holds at 60. Um, sometimes you'll note that the 14 might serve you a little bit better when the range is a little bit tighter. I might have said that backwards in the beginning. Uh, the 20 will flatten it out a little bit, so you're not getting as much noise. Does that make sense, Terrence? Just got to sort of finesse it sometimes. He says, okay, thanks, Mike. You got it. Mark says, obviously, the sterling pair is triggered. Look at long sterling. Uh, we can take a quick segue. Yeah, it looks like we're missing some triggers here. Okay, the sterling, I still wouldn't necessarily be interested in playing, Mark, just on account of the weekly opening range. I kind of do need to see 51.75 give out to the upside before... Um, before I do anything on that, I do like to pound long in general, guys. Here's what the daily looks like. We're going to take a quick segue here for uh, for Mark. So I think um, <clears throat> on this one, the ideal scenario, and we highlighted this last week, if you guys remember, is right here. A 50% retracement of that rally off of last month's low. You have a nice confluence region there with a trend line resistance dating back to the July highs. Um, you know, I got the even 50-day moving average below that. Long story short, that takes you a little bit lower from where we are right now. And 5150, which is what we're testing, is a nice pivot that we've been working off of with the 100-day moving average. I'm not a big moving average guy, but when you see markets pivoting off it, as you do here, specifically on a closed basis, um, you know, it's just something you want to pay attention to. And so for the pound with a weekly opening range that is so incredibly tight here uh, with only about 70 pip range, kind of want to sit this out and see if we can get that topside breach. A break above 60, move surpassing. The opening range highs, the 618 retracement, the low from the 28th, there's a lot there. I think puts the long side bias into a little bit more of a conviction trade. Does that make sense? Mark says, agree, gotcha. Yeah, still no range break, right? So here's the thing, Mark. You can play inside this range. So I do see the trigger you're talking about. Let's bring it up on the five. Okay. Um, It's not the most compelling trigger, but it is there. Three-point touch right there. That would have put you long, right around 51.30 against the opening range, low 51. Yeah, it would have actually panned out pretty well uh, on the release for the data print we just got. Uh, here's what we're going to do, guys. When we have data prints, I'm going to try to open up the room a little bit earlier and see if we can take advantage of some of these scalps. I'm typically not really huge on playing the 8.30 data print unless it's going to be an NFP read or something like that. Uh, trade bounce figures don't typically give us you know, major plays, but um, we'll see if we can open the room a little bit earlier to get those releases in. Long story short, you can play these ranges, Mark, but the only thing you want to be mindful of is your targets should never be outside of the weekly opening range until that clears. You know what I mean? So if you take a spike like that as you head into the weekly opening range, even though it might break, you got to be just taking the trade off because you have no conviction uh, for a near-term bias yet. And in fact, if you look at the momentum signature, yeah, we dribbled below 40, but here we are, 40 support, 40 support, heading into 60. Now, my personal opinion, again, I, I, I do like the downside, the upside in general. Uh, you're getting some divergence here as you headed into this downside low. So momentum, price action making a lower low, the oscillator making a higher low. Okay, so that is there. But until we clear that opening range for the week, you want to be cautious. He says it still could retrace. I got you. All right, Mark. Good question, man. Mark Lavender says it looks to me like spreads opened up just before the release. I jumped in a and scalped 60 pips. Mark, you're talking about the Aussie. Nice play, man. Yeah, it's it's the way you got to do it with those with those releases. 
And the spreads blown out, guys, is an inevitability. Even on the trade desk, you know, trading managed funds, it's um, it's just unavoidable. Liquidity starts to dry up, even with the biggest liquidity providers when they're coming into a major release like that. And specifically when it's not just NFPs, a number that's better or worse, the interest rate decision is always tricky because a lot of the reaction you'll get is the forward guidance, not necessarily whether they cut or not, right? As we said yesterday, markets had factored in 70% chance already that there was going to be a cut. So the reaction was really more prominently in response to, um, you know, the uh, the forward guidance. So this is your new uh, near-term bearish invalidation level. Again, we'll be watching this heading to the U.S. session. Let me just zoom this out and show you the uh, the reference guidelines on this. All right, so the top side break here, the initial target would be this median line. We already sailed through it twice. I'm not going to stress it, but that puts you somewhere around 5220, depending on time. And one other thing we want to do in the event of a top side break, guys, now that we have some divergence, if the opening range breaks to the upside, do a quick retracement off these highs, Let's see where that 50 comes in. There's the low. All right, you know what? We're going to leave all these levels. They look pretty good. We'll bring that 786 into a 764. Tighten that up a little bit. Match up with that low. Looks pretty good. We'll push the opening range just a little bit higher into that 236. Let this thing give some room. Again, the breakout's going to be hard. If you missed the breakout, wait for the pullback and try to get in against some sort of near-term low. But that's sort of the game plan on a recovery here for the pound. Keep in mind the daily chart again. I wouldn't be surprised if it, if it stretches down to 50-30. This 50-30, 50-50 range is where I'd be a little bit more comfortable, uh, you know, trying to fade the decline here. And that coincides with these highs here, 50-50, 60-50-50. So we'll see on the pound. All right, back to the intraday page. I just want to go over real quick the Kiwi charts, guys. Tonight is the employment data for New Zealand as well. I want to make sure we're all updated on this one. So incredibly tight opening range. We're looking for the downside. If you recall, um, you know the downside bias remained in play. We we're trying to see if this median line uh, resistance or the slope resistance held as held as resistance. <laughs> we we're looking for the momentum signature to cap out near 60 here for the trigger to give out. Well, it actually panned out perfectly, and this was one of the plays, one of the only plays that actually looked pretty decent. Fizzled out pretty quick, but it attained the 7889 target, or 7489 target, excuse me, which was a 786. Again, it's funny because we, we were ta just talking about this last week in the webinar, guys. The com pairs, the commodity pairs tend to like those 786 retracements a little bit more so um, you know, than its major counterpart. So on the Aussie and the Kiwi, typically we'll work with the 786 instead of the 764. It's just something I've noticed over the years. But in any event, um, that's the exact low here. So the rebound giving us a little bit of a topside kick. We'll see if this holds. If we head into the U.S. session, you get a short trigger up here against these highs. does give us a near-term risk reward that's pretty decent. Um, the only caveat is that you are putting in divergence and momentum. Okay. So if you look at the lows that we made back here last week, a lower low, equal lows even, in the oscillator is divergence, right? You're looking for this to not confirm an extreme in price. And this is a new extreme, a new low. So we'll be mindful of that. Take this down to the new lows at this point. And we're broadly still looking to stay bearish below this region right here. Again, the only thing that would put us on the constructive side would be a break of the opening range high for the week, which currently comes in at 75.50. 75.55 or so. Okay, so what are the expectations? Uh, well, really quick, here's the daily chart for Kiwi. Again, we're testing the support. This is what the focus was as we started the week, 75.18. Still is sort of the focus. We want to see a, a more uh, market close below that. Today would be the first close below that if we do get it. Um, 
but also it looks like that momentum trigger is finally giving out, dating back to the lows we made for the year uh, back in February. So things look pretty good. Still looking to maintain a broader downside bias for the Kiwi. Okay, looking to sell rallies in the pair below 75.50. Um, <clears throat> looking forward to uh, the RBA interest or the um, New, New Zealand data tonight, here's what the data is supposed to look like. So we're expecting the employment rate to hold or decline, excuse me, from 5.7 to 5.5 percent. Uh, that gives us a change of about 0.8 percent growth from a previous rate of 1.2. So that's what the expectation is. Um, participation rate has already been downwardly revised. So that's supposed to hold at 69.4. So depending on what the dollar does today, we'll be looking for this data to give us a little bit of a pop just after the close. And again, near term looking to stay weighted to the downside here for Kiwi. Questions on this before we move on? Hey, Sandy, great seeing the room. I'm short dollar cad and euro dollar. Could we go to those pairs anytime soon? Sure. Let's jump into the euro dollar. That's the last one on the intraday page. Again, here, very tight opening range. You did see a little bit of a break yesterday, but we're still within that formation. Let me zoom this out real quick. Okay, we are getting some continued dollar sell-off here. Just seeing some headlines hit the... Uh, the price feeds. Okay, near-term resistance 111.75. That's going to be the pivot that we made on the Sunday open. Okay, this is really the invalidation level for the short side of the trade. We were looking for a pullback early in the week. Remember, uh, this does look pretty good. Finally got a break of that trigger from last week. And again, this is going to get messy, guys, but you just want to kind of get a gauge for what half the range has been. I think we're approaching that pretty soon. Yeah, 111.77, same exact level. So look for near-term resistance there, 112. This is sort of the region of resistance that you want to target on the Euro rally right now. And the five-minute looks like this. So on the U.S. opening range, on the downturn, momentum finds support ahead of 40. 60 break keeps the top side in focus. Objectively, from the opening range of the month, looks like you just broke a basic trend line resistance there. That's messy. Yeah, it's a messy break any way you look at it. That's your support trigger to keep the long side in play. 111.77, 112.05, four. this region right here. And again, this is the objective opening range high for the week. So that's really the breakout zone. You look for a rally into 113 in that, in that type of scenario. Uh, here's what the uh, euro looks like on the daily, guys. And again, you know the highlighted support that we put on Monday is exactly where we're catching the lows right now. Dollars finally putting off 1180. We're finally starting to get clarity, and it's okay if we're missing some of these positions. I know it's frustrating. Kind of wish I had caught that one too, but um, you know, it's very early in the week, very early in the month, and there's a lot of event risk on tap. So I'm not, I don't get too hard on myself for for missing some of these positions here. Um, again, 112.80. Nice confluence region there. 100-day moving average, 764 retracement, the high stretch that we made, right ahead of that 111, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, hey Roseman, good to see you, says hi, my first day, your level and bias for the US dollar, um, you're talking about the index, Roseman, first of all, Jamal, welcome aboard. Uh, let me know which uh, period that you're looking at. So you're looking for shorting at 112, Raj? No, that's where resistance is. Don't misunderstand me. That's where resistance is. So that's where I expect to see a pullback 
so that I can try to get back on the long side of the trade, right? The only thing, remember, guys, we need, just because we're coming into resistance doesn't mean that's necessarily where we're looking to short the position, guys, right? Raja and Adria says, okay, gotcha, yes, awesome, okay, so <laughs> make sure we're on the same page, right? Um, here, here's the thing. If we come into that reg resistance region and you get a short trigger and you have a good stop against the opening range high, you can fade it, right? Just a scalp, though. You're only going to be looking for, you know, half of what you typically be looking for because you're coming against the daily trend. So we want to make sure that we're keeping that in view. We'd still rather be trying to go along with the daily trend than fight it, per se. Um, the dollar index? Absolutely. I hope I'm saying your, right, your name right. Uh, Roseman, here's <clears throat> the dollar index. We've been watching this chart for weeks. Um, the major resistance that we just came into is the inflection point. We went over this earlier in the session. So uh, just for your information, all of these webinars, guys, are all archived. You can go through them at your leisure. There is a lot of information that we um, throw out you guys during the course of the webinars. So definitely if you're newer to the strategy or if you're newer to SB Trade Desk, it's the best way to really get acclimated with our type of uh, analysis is just to go through some of the webinars, see how we kind of break down the trades, see how we develop and uh, ascertain our biases. And definitely, you know, this is the best forum, guys, for questions, concerns. Um, you know, we want to make sure that you guys are benefiting from the service as much as possible. So, Roseman, at this point, near term support, you should be looking right below that region where that confluence of the 100 day moving average and the median line again. Okay, and that's basically like 111.8, uh, excuse me, 11.8. 35 or so right around this region here and again for me that's going to be the break that'll you know put us a little bit more in a, on a concerted down down stretch as it stands if we were to close here and I said this earlier in the session it would be an outside reversal candle at resistance which is you know a bearish development last time we got that very development an outside reversal at resistance two times in the last two months first one was right here in April, okay, you rallied right into 12,071. You put an outside reversal at the highs and it came off the next three days. And then the last one before that was right in March at the highs right here. Not the day the high was made, but you had a huge outside reversal candle at the highs, which led to a good, a little bit more of a downstretch. Long story short, these are just technical developments that you use to try to help you ascertain what the near term bias should be. And um, you have no validation of that till this candle closes, but something to be on the lookout for today on the index. Roseman, does that help? It says, yes, sir. All right, great. Okay, um, so that is the Euro dollar. We've now covered those three um, again. You know, keep your eyes on this sort of key range that we're looking for on the euro. Uh, we were looking for either a break below this zone to open up the shorts. That didn't materialize here. Um, and we're looking for either a break above 122.24 to open up the longs. Again, that's the opening range high for the week. We're still playing within that range. So um, lackluster at best, guys. And it's not surprising. Okay, there's so much on tap that uh, markets will go into these lulls. It's in our best interest to sort of tuck in tight. Any scalps you take should be about half quarter leverage that you typically look for um, and just stay nimble. You know, I think once we get through this week, we'll have a lot more clarity in some of these directional biases. Um, looking at Euro key. Sandy, dollar cat, let me do that first real quick. So. OK, we're making a move back below 2095. So if you remember, last week we came into that major key support for dollar CAD. 119.90 was sort of where we sort of just played off the rest of the trade. Um, that's a basic 38.2 from the advance off the July low. Uh, there's a lot here. Um, and if you go back to last week's webinar, this uh, was a pair that we were very, very heavily focused on. Uh, uh, the swing side of trades took a nice, nice chunk on the downside here as well. So here's that median line off the lows. That's almost the exact low that we went into last week. Again, that 38.2 was preserved on a closed basis. And the rally on the rebound, we were looking for resistance and a nice confluence median line zone. Basically that same one and the operative median line off the highs for this year. 
J. That's exactly where we capped out. So what does the near term say? This constitutes near term, a break of the weekly opening range. Okay, here's your Sunday, Monday low. You tested that low again in Asia trade last night. Here's the break. My only concern, um, Sandy, is still that slope zone. You know, this could be a, a simple break of resistance, check his support, then move off. Okay, and until we get back below that, I'm a little cautious about favoring the downside this this deep into the game. Having said that, the dollar the dollar index is finally turning around, right? So it could be a nice break. I kind of would like to see us get below this zone, though, uh, for the conviction short to be in play. Now that we've broken that, these extensions are null and void. Just quick retracement off last week's low. See if anything comes up. Those are the new levels I'd be looking at. So you've now completed the exact 618 retracement. So Sandy, does that make sense? Sandy says I shorted from 22.50. Nice entry. Nice entry. Yeah, so if you're looking for a medium term position like that, here's what I would say. I would just be concerned that on, a, on this downstretch, you're not going to get the full extension. So um, this would be still my line in sand, to be quite frank with you, Sandy right around this region. Um, you might want to take some off, bring your stops to break even or better. I'm sure your stops are way inside already. But if you get that crack below 2040, I'd be very comfortable holding that position. Um, that's sort of the slope range that caught the low right in the beginning of the week. And here we are again, pausing right there. Sandy, does that make sense? For the dollar cad? <clears throat> Momentum looks pretty good since you started the week. There's the 60 hold, 40 break, 60 hold, 40 break. And again, take a trigger off the low in price. This was actually a pretty nice trigger right into the highs. Not bad. Sandy says, yes, all right. So for the most part, will you be staying on the sidelines this week for all of the news on tap? Do you trade NFPs? AA says, I typically love trading NFPs. I actually will be, like I said, traveling during the latter part of this week, so I won't be able to participate. Maybe I'll get in a few scalps if I can get uh, access. Um, it's not typically the case. Uh, I will trade uh, euros on the, on, the, on the front of it and on the back of it. Typically, I won't be jumping into positions from a scalp basis on the release. Um, you know, if the, if the release press is priced into a high and I'm looking to fade it, um, you know, I'll be more than happy to take those positions. Uh, heading into the release or heading into the um, session tonight, I'm going to be looking at the Aussie and the Kiwi for the employment data. I will give you guys an update on SB Squawk if we do look to take a little bit more of a meaningful position. But um, yeah, AA for me, this is not really the most active time of the week, of the month rather. This is kind of where I have to sit on my hands uh, forcibly. Trust me, I've made a mess of things very early in the month before trying to get aggressive on these positions. For my t style of analysis, I just know where 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 our strengths are and where our weaknesses are. And when you first come into these ranges with event risk on tap, you see a lot of chop action. It depends on the pair, guys. I really want to stress that. Like something like this, when the range finally gives, I'll be a little bit more comfortable to play. But if you're looking at something like the British Pound, where the entire weekly range is something like that. I don't want to waste my time. And at the same time, you're just not going to get those clear cut triggers. So even if the, the break does happen, you get an opening range break, you're not going to get the full quarter ATR extension. It'll go like 20 pips, fizzle out, come back. And, you know, that's just because there's not too much liquidity volume pushing price because there's a lot of people on the sidelines ahead of major event risk. So, Again, prudence pays sometimes in near-term strategies. This is where you want to spend time with the charts. This is where you want to look at the broader pictures. This is where you want to be positioning for swing trades, right? Um, but as far as the you know intra intraday, kind of need these opening these ranges to, to to widen out a little bit. So 
I want to look at some of the pairs that you guys were asking about. So let me go back here. Uh, sterling yen for Eileen. First things first. Here's what the sterling yen looks like. On the daily. Major highlight support that we've been talking about in the inflection range that gave us the breakout initially is going to be the 81, 12, uh, 81 region right here. Former trend line resistance. 618 retracement from the decline. I'm not going to stress that per se. 100% extension off the low. Monthly pivot, not necessarily something that we stress. Momentum is at support. Interesting. So Eileen's question was, is it really taking off any place for longs? Well, from the momentum signature on the daily chart, I'm not bearish on this uh, for the broader trade, right? In fact, for those of you who've been following me from Daily FX, um, this is still my trade of the year for the last two years running. I think Sterling Yen has a, has a fundamental story that matches pretty nicely with the technicals. And again, you know, not to get fundy wise, but on whole, I think the, the, the BOE is probably you know, best prepped to start moving to normalize policy, even more so than the Fed. When you take the divergence of that and the BOJ, you know, with where the technicals are in the broader picture, I still look, I'm still looking higher on, on, the, on the longer term. That being said, look at the momentum signature, right? You got some divergence in price into the lows. Remember, when you're looking at divergence, it's only the close that matters. So you got some divergence into some lows, a false break of a multi-year trend line that came right back above momentum this whole year, despite that low that you made, held 40 here, and then we just broke 60 to the upside. So I'm broadly constructive on the trade, irrespective. Uh, does it hold here, or does the opening range stretch low before you move higher is the question. You made an outside reversal day at the highs, or it wasn't a reversal day because the first, the previous day was, a, was also negative, but it was an outside day at the highs, at resistance. Um, has me a little bit more cautious. I think... You know, this could rebound here and give us another break before you start to move higher. Long story short, let's look what the um, what near term price action is telling us. I wanted to do one thing. Oh, yeah. Let me just take a quick retracement. See if we have any overlap on the stretch here. Yeah. So whenever a 618 or 50 comes up on a highlighted region that you're watching already, it always adds credence to it. Don't leave it high. Okay, so we'll just leave that like that. Um, Sterling in on the scalp looks like this. Again, I'm going right off the fly here, guys. We haven't looked at this this week. So here's the weekly opening range. The cleanest, but could be still in play here. Okay. Yeah, and Eileen, that data spike right there is kind of the only thing that that I I think might have faked you out on this breakout here. Uh, objectively, you know, we're still we're still within the weekly opening range here, just like the pound dollar. Yeah. Listen, above 81, this is still the region that you want to focus on. And any long exposure you take should be against this on a broader scale. That being said, we'd need to clear back above 82.60 just to get the upside bias back in play on this. Um, momentum does look good, but you'd have to be looking for fresh long triggers from here. There's a whole lot of divergence. A whole lot of divergence into that low. Lower, low, lower, low, lower, low, lower, low. Higher low, higher low, higher low. I'd be more favoring a, a dip into like 81, 181 on this one, Eileen, uh, and then trying to get some long exposure there. 
or if you get the move above 8260, look to buy pullbacks until we clear this range. You know, there's not much in it for me here. Broadly looking to stay constructive above this zone. Okay, so the long bias is in play above this region here. Aline, does that make sense? Yes, saw the spike come back in the range. Uh, range clearing makes sense, Eileen says. Uh, Sterling Yen would like to be short as the candle rejected the weekly pivot. It was rejected at the weekly pivot and yesterday's high. On Sterling Yen, let's bring up the weekly pivot. Uh, that's the monthly. Oops. Right, so it adds further conviction. Again, I'm not really big on using pivots. Sandy, you know that, but it comes right in line with a region of resistance that we're watching, and it's namely the objective opening range high, which I think is probably even more accurate than the pivot is at this point. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean I want to be bearish, uh, Sandy, at least not in my book. Um, you could get a kickback here. Even if you do play the short side, you want to make sure that you're being mindful of the weekly opening range low at 81. But um, you know, it's just a trade out resistance. I don't necessarily have any short triggers here per se. So, might be on the radar. Nice healthy ATR. Some levels you want to kind of look at. On the top side, in the event of a breach of the opening range for the week, and here's sort of the invalidation level for the broader trade on a move below that region. Uh, there was another question here on Euro key, and that's actually something I was paying attention to last night. Here's what the daily looks like. Really interesting area of resistance. You're looking at a confluence region of the upper median line parallel from the highs, and then a 38.2 basic retracement of that range. And um, there's not much beyond that when it comes to conviction. Even on a slope factor, guys, if you look at the lower median line parallel from, an, from the earlier formation, even that comes into that region as well. So, um, you know, it's make or break for the Euro Kiwi here. And I think for this, since we're watching the Euro and the Kiwi respectively on the intraday page, you'll get a lot more clarity on the NFP break. Um, if, if provided Kiwi data gives us something today on a continuation lower, if the if the euro breaks these highs, you know you're basically looking for a soft target at the R1. Sandy, you should like this, <laughs> 150 30, 150.35, um, and then 51.60 should be pretty big as well. Nice pivot in price. Um, you know you have this close lows from the decline here in 2013, so that's the actual 2013 close low, and the 50% retracement of the entire range. Levels are pretty good on this one. Uh, here's what the scalp looks like. Uh, the formation also very clean. This is off of a couple of weeks back. This is off the March lows, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And again, really tight opening range for the week. Wouldn't be surprised if we get a minor setback. And this is sort of where I'd like to start looking on the high side, on the long side again. But um, momentum holding 60 here is resistance. We broke the median line as support. You actually still might get a drop to the downside here. Uh, again. The range is big. If you want to play within the weekly opening range on a decent trigger here, see if we have anything in the five minute for Euro key. Okay, I don't have it in the subscription list on this one, so bear with me one second, guys. Let's just zoom this into a five minute, see what kind of triggers we have. Okay, so it's setting up with a real nice opening range for uh, the U.S. session so far. Low comes in at 41.10, high comes in at 41.50, right about our 40 pip ATR limit. Some divergence into the highs. Oop, take it off the low.
price action press into a fresher high, price action holding, divergence into a trigger break. Um, actually could be a decent play here heading to the U.S. session. I'm not really a big fan of fading the euro strength, and essentially you're going long Kiwi. So you're going to want to watch those trades, but that's the risk as far as the resistance zone here. Okay. All right. We'll watch this one here again. I'm a little bit I'm a little bit hesitant because I'm not really a fan of trying to fight the Kiwi uh, weakness, but it does look like a short trigger is giving out. Stops would be against the high. Initial limit on the on the pullback would be right around. One forty eight would be a soft target. One forty eight, one forty seven eighty seven would be the initial target on a pullback there, guys, for the Euro key. Yeah, so even on the real, real near term, looks like you're coming into uh just basic forty support on the momentum. So we'll see if the 8.30 snap is going to give it to us, guys, the 8.30, 9.30 snap. Let's wait to see if the, for the U.S. opening range. On a rally back into this region, if we do get a support trigger, I think that's the one I'll be looking to take. Um, but even, the, again, on a scalp basis, real, real nimble, right? The broader trade is really begging for a breach of this major resistance. And I'd be much more interested in taking a larger position on uh, a move like that, even on a swing basis, uh, more so than necessarily trying to scalp in against this this really strong uptrend right but the broader uh directional trade is there so for who was that question for there does that help on euro key so raj i answered your question before i saw it there did do you uh, do you have that he said what would the targets be on the shorts from a scalp standpoint those are the levels i'd be looking at um he says, yes, I'm targeting 145. So you're looking for a much, much deeper swing. 145 would be the highs right around this region. Yeah, on a break of the weekly opening range, I think that's a very fair target. I think that's a very, very fair target. But right now, it's just an uptrend at resistance. Um, AA says, did we cover Sterling Key? No, we didn't, and I haven't been looking at it, so let's take a look at what Sterling Key is doing. Another outside day reversal here today, right back into resistance. So let me just clean this up a little bit, guys. Some stale, stale levels at this point. Don't need that 50 anymore. Six is good. This six one eight. Yeah, um, for me, this is the same exact trade. It's a it's a near term it's a uptrend out resistance uh, the way I'm seeing it. If you look at the momentum signature, overbought hold at 40. Yeah, you'll get those spike lows on the corrections, but they're very short lived. Overbought support at 40, back above 60. Looks constructive, but you still haven't cleared the opening range high for the week. Even here's your weekly open, here's the high, here's the low, you know, range bound at best. 
Uh, pairs like these will tend to play. Like I said, the uh, com pairs tend to play pretty decent with the opening ranges. Here's last week's opening range. Um, you know, you, you started the week, you came into a low, you tested the high. It's almost exactly what we're doing right now. You made one more attempt at a break of the lows, then you went right through the highs. Upside bias remains in play. Um, that's sort of what we're looking at right now to start the week. And in fact, the momentum signature holding at 40 here um, just suggests that you can't really get too bearish even though you're at resistance. Uptrend at resistance. And a lot of times, guys, this is where we get caught the worst. Because a lot of people say, oh, well, we're at resistance. You know, let's start shorting here. Yeah, but that's, you know, not the that's not the trade, right? We want to wait for the pullback to get back on the long side. It's always going to be in your better, always going to be in your in, in your best interest to go with the trend. So um, I don't, again, on these sterling crosses, which is why I said earlier in the session, I think all, all of these sterling crosses get much more clarity heading into the close of this week, start of next week. Um, they're all just at critical ranges. You know, sterling yen, uptrend, at resistance. Sterling kiwi, uptrend, at resistance. Um, or I'm sorry, sterling yen is, is, is a little bit different of a, of a case here because of what the yen's doing. Saw someone ask earlier about the dollar yen. Um, hasn't really been on my radar. It's a very similar trade, uptrend at resistance, right? So here's the swing from the lows. Looking at that median line, looking at that 120 18 level again. The momentum has been completely quiet for over a month. So the yen crosses, for me, have not been the driver. The yen hasn't been the driver in those yen crosses. It's really been the counterpart. Um, so we'll need to see some clarity on that one as well. Quick review on what's happening in gold. Um, yesterday's gold daily uh, kind of gave you guys a quick uh, update on what we're looking at there. No change. We got invalidated on the short side with yesterday's close above the median line. You know, you're basically looking for 1204. You're looking for median line resistance. And I just a couple of notes for gold. You know, that five day stretch we made into the start of April is still the opening range that we held in for the entire month. Uh, the last five days of the month or four days of the month saw uh, an entire retrace of the monthly opening range. We're still within that same given range. So um, watch for near-term resistance 12.04 on this upstretch here. And specifically, um, this is the median line that we need to clear. And I think if we do clear it, 12.25, 12.45 could be on tap. We're completely neutral here to start off the month on gold, guys. There's been just way too much whipsaw action over the last <laughs> six sessions to really take a conviction long-term stance here. So uh, we'll be looking for the upstretch into 1,200. All right, Tuttle, which pair is that on? It says, I already got 37 pips from the short. Ah, you're playing dollar yen. Gutsy guy. Gutsy guy. Um, Do you have a median line up there? Is that one in play still? Yeah, not bad. Five minute RSI test and rehold. Let's take a look at that actually. I want to see how that looked here. I'm sure it'll help someone out in the room. Uh, dollar yen. I'm not sure where all my pairs went. <clears throat> very nice, very nice. So this is a trigger actually that uh, Tuttle just took right on, man. He said he was looking at a 14 at the 14 RSI, irrespective, right? It's right on one, two, three, four, five tags. There's the break, retest, and that's exactly how you want to do it. It's exactly how you want it. Nice entry, well done. So keep in mind now, right? Tuttle on the pullback here. I don't know if you're still in the trade, but uh, so for dollar yen, you're looking for about 20 pips per scalp. Looks like you said you've already gotten about 30 and change, right? Keep in mind one thing. Now you're testing the Tokyo opening range low, the Sydney opening range low, um, and yesterday's London-Tokyo opening range low, right? The weekly opening range low comes right here. 
So that's the validation that would give us a near-term short bias for dollar yen. You'd be looking to sell rallies. Remember last week, guys, we were looking at dollar yen, the same thing. We highlighted the opening range on Tuesday. Look what happened into the end of the week. Couple false breaks below, but it, it inevitably turned around, went right through the highs, and it rallied right into the close of the week. So, you know, it's important to keep in mind where the broader trade is right now. And as long as we hold that range, nimble is the name of the game. He says, yes, I saw the previous lows and closed out the entire position. My man, that's exactly how you want to play it. Tuttle, good eye. Good eye. All right. Uh, so, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here. If there are no other questions, uh, Mark, I will take a look at Euro Oz for you 100%. Let's take a quick gander at what that's doing. Ooh, at major support, 140.50, 140.70 here. He says, it's okay if there are no – I got you, Mark. I got you. No worries. Right off of a nice medium line there. Take a look. Uh, Adrian says, let me capture your Aussie dollar scalp chart. I thought I had it. Uh, the levels are unchanged from the intraday page, but it's right here for you. Guys, again, if you're newer to the room, always remember any charts that you see on SB Trade Desk on any of our webinars, you can always go to the top right hand corner of your GoTo webinar screen, a little pack, a little picture of a camera. Actually, it might be on the left. Uh, <laughs> and that'll allow you to take a snapshot of anything that you see on the screen. So for future reference, if you do need that, uh, you know, feel free to refer back to it. On the Euro Oz, Mark. Um, 140, 60, 140, 50 is still a major area of interest for me. That's the close low that you made for the January stretch on the opening range. You can see the pivot we saw there in March, the pivot break and opening range low for April. So that's what put us bearish into the April close. Hmm. Objectively speaking, you want to stay you want to stay bearish below forty one ninety near term. Um, it's the breakout level for the um, Aussie interest rate decision we got last night. Yeah, I'm not really a fan. I'm a, I'm a fan of a a, a pair. I'm a favor. Um, a pair I favor right now because I do think the euro could rally alongside the Aussies. So it doesn't give me a clear cut conviction bias. And I don't like necessarily think that way, but um, remember, euro is testing major key support here. So if we do get the upside stretch of the weekly opening range, specifically 1280, um, that could see a lot more upside too. And we just went over the Aussie trade, which is obviously you know, showing a really strong reaction to near term support as well. So I'd shelf the Euro Oz as far as a longer term bias. Near term, I'd be looking if we break below 40, 60, 40, 50, you could probably play a deeper recovery on a, on a Euro pullback. But um, the targets look pretty good. The targets look pretty good. Mark says, uh, willing to lower my stop. My targets are quite big. So you're looking to play a little bit more of an upswing, right? The, the, the major benefit that you have for you is that reaction off the median line. Um, very clean, right? And a 200-day moving average. So yeah, on a bounce back, you could probably get another stretch lower. Um, but I'm not sure you'd want to stick with a very strong down bias on this trade in general. Okay, just to be cautious. The momentum barrier held 40, really, really clean last month. The reaction to a major key support was pretty clean. So before you start to get overly aggressive on the Euro shorts again, guys, that's just one thing I would keep in mind. Um, and here I was trying to bend out correlation, says Mark. <laughs> no worries. No worries, man. You're in the right place. Hey, guys, so I hope you found this helpful. Again, um, we'll be giving you updates on the SB Squawk. Jamie's uh, webinar is scheduled. No change tomorrow at 1.30. Eileen says, have fun with your out-of-town trip. Thanks for your help. See you next week. Thanks to you, Eileen. Thanks to everyone in the room. Again, 
um, watch these opening uh, ranges for the week, guys, and keep in mind the data tonight. You got the RBNZ, you got the uh, Aussie employment report. Again, tomorrow we're heading into the U.S. ADP, and then Friday's non-form payroll report. We'll try to keep you updated on SP Spock as best as we can. Till next week, guys, best of luck trading. We'll see you then. Cheers.